Hi everyone, I'm Kirsty. Um, so I am the Hass and Sustainability Coordinator at Golden Grove High School. Uh, this is my fourth year there uh, in that position. So I'm going to give you, I guess, a little bit of context to our site. Um, I am going to talk a lot about staff-based um, initiatives first because in terms of curriculum we have had some huge advancements in curriculum but it didn't start with that there was a lot of background work to get staff in the mood to get involved so I thought I'd offer some of the strategies that we employed um, beforehand to get us all on the same page at Golden Grove. So just a little bit of context for those of you who don't know um, we are in the city of Tea Tree Gully we are a large site Golden Grove High School has approximately 1400 students from 8 to 12 which has its own complexities of its you know in itself we have 1400 students to get on board and over 100 staff uh, if we want to implement any sort of strategies so it is complex and adding to that we are actually a cross campus facility so there's three schools on the one site we are also on site with Gleason College and Padair Christian College uh, and they are three separate schools but they are all on the same site so we do have shared facilities in terms of our design and tech rooms, our home ec rooms, some of our display rooms. It also means that we can offer cross campus year 12 subjects so if we aren't running a subject we might send a student over to cross campus to, to do that. We are a centre of excellence in the arts. Uh, our school we have a major focus on a dance program. So that is us at Golden Grove in a nutshell. Uh, in terms of sustainability, we're pretty lucky in the sense that we do have a fairly well-established environmental action team. We call ourselves EAT. It took me a long time to stop saying the EAT team, and then I realised that I was saying the environmental action team team. It took me a good 18 months to work that out. <laughs> Uh, that is led by the sustainability coordinator, so uh, at the moment it is led by myself. We have probably about, on any given time, six to eight fairly active members on that site. So it is relatively small in comparison to a site of 100 staff, but they are a very passionate group of teachers who do volunteer their time. Uh, we meet three times a term uh, for an hour and we also have representatives from NRM come along to those meetings and we also have a KSAB representative come along to these meetings. So we're very lucky to have those outside agencies um, and very fortunate. And you know, if you haven't connected with those outside agencies, I strongly recommend that you get in touch because the feedback that they give and the, the help in terms of getting projects up and running uh, is absolutely excellent. So we also have an environmental protection unit. This was a unit that was started last year. Basically on our environmental action team it is staff but we also have students involved so our student voice representatives come along to those meetings and they also have a say in equal weighting in terms of voting rights for strategies and things like that. But we had a core group of students who were just really interested in the environment so we said oh hey why don't you come and meet with us one lunchtime so there was a group of about 15 came along and they now meet once a fortnight uh, just at a lunchtime. They called themselves the Environmental Protection Unit. I think they thought that, that sounded pretty cool. But they, they talk about student-based initiatives in terms of environmental sustainability and what they want to see happening. It came about a lot because our principal was pushing very heavily for us as the sustainability team to fix the rubbish problem in the yard. I did tell him a, many times that this was a whole society issue, not a Golden Grove High School issue. Uh, and that it wasn't an, as easy as that, but the EPU did get started to try and tackle that, that issue of why are students still throwing rubbish on the ground and things like that. But they've expanded out now and just getting them in the room once a fortnight to have a chat um, and hear what they have to say about wanting to help the environment in itself is really cool hearing uh, their passion moving forward. So that's our context. So we also have uh, a SEMP or a site environment management plan. So we had three goals. I think it was two years ago we decided that we weren't in a position at Golden Grove to push staff and push staff to implement sustainability wholeheartedly into their curriculum if they weren't engaged in it. Uh, a lot of our staff didn't really care about the cross-curriculum priority in the sense that they were so overwhelmed with so many other requirements to fit into their course. So we decided to actually take a step back for 18 months, two years, and actually focus in on just getting staff involved in conversations uh, and students involved in conversations about sustainability uh, and why it's perhaps important to embed that into curriculum. So we came up with a whole lot of initiatives that we put in place. 
Uh, and we did start to see a really, really positive change in attitude uh, of our staff and lots of conversations taking place in the staff room. And then we started to get emails through of staff saying, hey, I've done this assignment or look how I've embedded this. Is there a way that I can improve it? So we've got a long way to go, but we've also come a long way. So this is the goal that I'm going to focus on today about how we did that. How do we raise awareness and engage staff uh, in sustainability? So this is one of our first little strategies. So th these are all little strategies that all added up. We set up a buy, sell, swap in our staff room. We set up a buy, sell, swap and giveaway table. Uh, this giveaway table, I have scored some really cool stuff. Um, lots of vouchers for wine, I must say. There must be someone out there who doesn't drink wine, but I have scored from it. Basically, the giveaway table, there's not very many exciting things on there at the moment, but usually that giveaway table's full because everybody's got that shelf at home where they've got stuff that they haven't used for 10 years, but they don't want to throw it out because it's still usable. So we have staff at least once a week, bring these things in, put them on the giveaway table, and it just gets people talking about, oh, hey, I'm really glad that this is getting a new lease of life rather than going to landfill and things like that. We also had a guy who had chickens, so he started selling eggs for five dollars a dozen. Half, you know, a lot of the staff jumped on board for that, um, and it was just a really easy way to promote, you know, that as a uh, community, there are little simple things that we can do to look into sustainability. So that worked really effectively. This table is also quite often full of food. So people that have excess herbs or fruit, there's always bowls of figs, which is amazing. You know, all the excess vegetables from the garden, they just bring it in, you know, bags of zucchinis and the staff take them away. So promoting sustainability that way. We also made our own Eat newsletter. So we thought we're doing some really cool stuff, but not everybody knows about it. So what's a really easy way that we can share information? So we set up, so twice uh, a term, we have, it's just two pages, so it's not a big massive newsletter, but we have an eat newsletter which we email to all staff, uh, we email to all students and we put it in school bags so that parents access it the same way that they would access the normal school newsletter. So in that we promote lots of things that we do, we promote little handy hints. So in all of our newsletters we give little handy hints on how people can be more sustainable at home. Okay, so rather than using chemicals, perhaps you could do this. At times, we've promoted local companies in terms of if they've got sustainable practices. So there was a company that was giving away uh, free light bulbs, so the eco-friendly light bulbs, so we promoted that. We had lots of parents ringing in saying, hey, cool, thank you, I didn't know that this was available. We also thought that this could be an avenue to promote things that the students come up with. So, for example, our student representatives on our environmental action team, they thought, well, there is an issue with our bin system. We're going to survey the whole school. So they took it upon themselves to survey the school, particularly about our green waste, because this was one of our green waste bins. And you can see that it is absolutely chockers with sandwiches and fruit, and half of them haven't even been taken out of their wrapper. And we've worked out that 44% of students surveyed threw away their food because they weren't hungry. 25% just were like, oh, I don't like my, what my parents pack me. So they get to school and they chuck it straight in the bin. And 15% say they throw it away because their parents are just packing them too much. So we thought parents need to know this information. So we used this as an avenue to communicate uh, and try and open up sustainability conversations in a wider context than just at school. We also did a survey about why students don't use the bin and 9% said they don't care and 20% said, oh, we're just lazy, you won't change that. And we thought, oh, what are we going to do with that? <laughs> uh, that one we're still working on, so I will get back to you. <laughs> yeah. um, but this was just a really easy, effective way. So we usually had a couple of handy hints, one good news story, we might promote an assignment that a student's done on sustainability, but just to get people talking and having conversations. Uh, another strategy that we did was we got really, really annoyed that as a staff we would go to our pigeonhole every morning and it would be chock full of paper and then we'd go to our email and the same documents were there. Exactly the same documents. So a lot of us were just picking up the paper and putting it straight in the recycling bin in our office. Um, so we went to the staff and we said, hey, would you care if it was just via email? And there were a few that were like, yeah, actually, we, we want our hard copy in our pigeonhole. So we gave them a week and we said, if you want a hard copy in your pigeonhole, here's a set of stickers, stick it on your pigeonhole. Uh, we had 11, so 11 out of our 100 staff stuck that sticker on their pigeonhole. 
Um, so we printed off the list of that name, gave it to the front office, and now every time those bits of paper come out, it is only those 11 people that receive it. Everyone else made the agreement that they would receive it via email. So all of those documents that we were doubling up on and being put in the bin, uh, we worked out that we saved about 10,000 bits of paper in our first 12 months just from this one simple strategy of, hey, do you mind if we just email it? Uh, it took about half an hour to organise. Um, so that, we found, was a really effective strategy. But what that also did was it... Have any taken the star off? Yes, so we did it for 12 months and we're now down to zero. It's all via email. Yep. But, but it also got people talking and it also got people talking about, wow, we really do waste paper. So we started to see a reduction of paper in meetings. And every meeting they'd all look at me and go, do I get praise today? And I'll go, yes, you get praise. <laughs> but we had members you know, in, in leadership meetings using the projector more often because it was just that awareness raising of, oh, actually I do. I quite often would have staff coming up and going, oh, I'm glad you said that. I, I can now print my assignment, you know, double-sided instead of on two pages. So it just got them thinking about other ways that they could perhaps reduce paper. So just the conversation starting was really effective in itself. We also run sustainability challenges. So we run two challenges a term in which we challenge our staff or our students to do something sustainable. So this one here was we had a go green sustainability challenge. Um, what we did was we promoted a whole heap of sustainable products. So we promoted Who Gives a Crap? Uh, if you haven't heard of Who Gives a Crap, it is a toilet paper company that just sells in bulk. It's 48 double length recycled paper. It's about 50 bucks. You get your 48 rolls of paper. Uh, it's made of recycled paper, but it is you, you wouldn't be able to tell. It's extremely comfortable. And all the proceeds go to building toilets in underdeveloped countries, so sanitary requirements. So we promoted that. We promoted wrapper bees, which is um, beeswax, so replacing glad wrap. We had bamboo toothbrushes as one of our products. I can't remember what the fourth one was, but we had four. Uh, and we rang all of the company and said, hey, if we put in a bulk order, we give us discount. And then we promoted it to staff. They put in our orders to us and paid us. And then we put in the, the bulk order. Um, and it, again, it was promoting local businesses, but it was also starting conversations. And those staff still now, I still get people saying, when are you putting in the next order for toilet paper? And I say, you can, you can go online and order it. I'm not going to become your personal shopper. But those conversations started happening. It's just about conversation Educating raising, them. educating that they're available. Yeah. yeah. So when, so that was just one of the examples but it was more to do with, oh, if we can be more sustainable, they started thinking of other ways that they could get sustainable products, so like reusing pens or using recycling pens and things like that. So it was just, some of these are more conversation starters and some of them are more obviously school-based. Will school itself get that toilet paper in the school toilets? No, they don't, they're bigger. Because oh, okay. they're, they're double the size of a normal toilet roll, so they don't fit in our toilet holders. But that would be fantastic. We did try. Another one of our challenges was we did a soft plastics challenge. So we promoted that Coles have a soft plastics recycling. So we challenged the staff and the students to make sure that every office and every classroom had a plastic bag in it to put soft plastics in. And that <coughs> was about 18 months ago now. And that still happens that um, they all have their soft plastics bin in their classroom or their office. And when it's full, they take it to the staff room and then someone from the team at the end of the week takes that to Coles and it all gets recycled. A lot of our staff and our students come and talk to us and say, hey, I told mum that we have to do this now. So it's going back out into the community and having conversations at home about the importance of sustainability. And then that leads on to other conversations about, oh, what else can we do um, and things like that. Uh, so that was a really good one. Another challenge that we're going to have uh, next, so our next challenge is to use the website um, is it Ecosia. Ecosia. Uh, it's a Google, like a search engine, just like Google. Uh, every time you use that search engine, the company plant a tree. That's their way of getting involved uh, and getting more people to use it. It works exactly the same as Google. You just type in www.ecosia, so e c o s i a dot com, and it comes up as a search engine. Uh, and you see down the side, it's got the tally. So our challenge to the students is, hey, try using this instead of Google for your search engines. So again, getting conversations started. We also have a reuse and recycle corner in our staff room, so next to our buy, sell, swap. Okay, so we've got 
someone donated one of these like bookshelves. So we recycle old batteries. So people, like if they're using batteries in their classroom or some people bring them in from home. We recycle old mobile phones. So um, every now and then the kids as part of one of their subjects would do a mobile phone muster and look at the uh, impacts of actually recycling mobile phones. Uh, staff at any stage can bring them in. We reuse plastic slips. So we have a pile here, people bring them in. At the end of last year, we had so many plastic slips that we asked people to put them there rather than in the bin at the end of the year when they emptied their folders. We put them together into packs, bundles of 100, okay? So, and we gave one to every single research project student. That was how many we had said. And at a site, our site, for every single year 11 student, we're looking at about 200 students with 100 plastic slips each. So they reused those every year. And we also gave them a folder. So we got everyone to bring in their folders instead of chucking them out. So our research project students get their 100 plastic slips and their folder um, to reuse. This, oh, this one up here was another one of our challenges about, you know, you can't actually recycle toothpaste um, tubes uh, and makeup products and things like that. A lot of people don't know that and they put it in their recycling. So again, it's just starting conversation. So staff now bring those in and stick them in the box. And when the box is full, we take them to be recycled in the proper place. We also promote significant sustainability days. So this one's a bit more cultural sustainability. So we actually had Harmony Week this year instead of Harmony Day. So we did lots of activities around that. We had a colour run at our school, an orange colour run. We had uh, Indigenous face painting one day. Our tech department took on as a project, um, they made a big massive world map out of wood and they cut it out into a puzzle. And every home group got a part of the world and they had a different colour ink and they put their fingerprints on it. And then we reconnected them together to show that we're all individual, okay, and we're all within, but when it comes together, we're all part of the world. So lots of different activities during that week to get people thinking. At our school, one of our consequences for students is yard cleanup if they're being naughty. Uh, and we as a team were getting really frustrated because these kids were going out with big bags that had big reusable on the front and they were putting all of this rubbish in it and we have a three bin system at our school so it was all cross contaminated in this plastic bag and then put in the waste bin. So we introduced the strategy of buckets. So you either get a red bucket and if you get a red bucket you can only pick up red waste. Like, so waste for the red bins. If you get a green bucket, you can only pick up food waste, which will go in the green bin. So even having those conversations with students about why, why that's important. So as part of their consequence, they get to hear me lecture about <laughs> the importance of not cross-contaminating our bins. Um, and we as a site also have a sustainability award. So at the end of every year, we pick a staff member or a faculty uh, and we pick one student who has gone out of their way to be sustainable and they get a prize at the end of the year. So our... Um, unit, so our special needs team, they actually won last year for their uh, veggie gardens. They were growing vegetable gardens for our home ec classes. So they got the award and they got a $100 Bunnings voucher, which they were so excited about. And they were like, oh, what other sustainable project can we use with that? So it's carrying on to the next year. So they're just some of the sort of strategies that we put in place to get staff talking. Um, so once we got staff on board, um, and engaged in sustainability and starting to see the benefits of it, then we started to push a little bit heavier of, okay, how can we incorporate this into the classroom? So we are a little bit unique in we actually have a year nine class called Land Care. Um, so that's a class designed on sustainability practices. So this class, essentially they're learning. It's an outdoor classroom. They spend a double lesson a week in the gardens of the school. So we have uh, an indigenous garden that has been set up. We have a butterfly garden that was set up to help um, the migration of the butterflies in a particular area. Um, and every sort of year or couple of years, they try and come up with a new project that they want to work on. And we also have uh, a recycling program. So they alternate between three different recycling issues. So all of our classrooms have a blue recycling bin. So once a week, some of the kids in that class will go and collect all that paper and then they put it together and they make paper pads. And that's what we use as our pads um, at our site. So we recycle that paper. There is another group who do the recycling with the yellow bins. Um, so we actually put in a fund for a fund and we received a grant and we actually made our own recycling table, okay, which is 
basically you throw all the bottles on and it pushes it through and recycles them and they put them into bundles and then our groundskeeper takes them um, to get the 10 cent money and that money then gets put back into us so that we can have more sustainable projects at the school. Um, and the third sort of station in that recycling program is our green waste, so our green bins. So we purchased uh, a couple of compost tumblers uh, and within that they do the composting of the, the green waste so that's not going into landfill as well. Uh, and the learning that takes place, so the theory work is all about the importance of all of this and why it's important um, and where to go from there. We also incorporate it into our geography class. Uh, so all of our year eight classes, so we have 12 of them. Twice a year we run what we call tree planting day at Cobbler Creek. So we reached out to outside agencies, so NRM were a massive support in helping us do this. Um, we also reached out to the volunteer groups at the National Park and they said, yes, we'd love to get kids in. So um, twice a year we take half of the year eights down as part of their geography unit and we plant trees. So we're part of the Trees for Life program. So we look after those plants and then we go and plant them down at the National Park. We do an Indigenous walking tour, so cultural sustainability is part of that. Uh, and then we look at the impacts of urbanisation um, and human contact as part of the geography unit. So getting the, the geography kids engaged. Um, I loved this one. Our dance teacher came up to me not long ago and she was like, oh, we're, we're talking so much about rubbish. She's like, I didn't know how to do it. So she's the dance teacher. So she creates dances for her students to perform. She actually created um, a rubbish dance. <laughs> so her kids in their dance moves, they were plastic bags. Uh, and the story was told about the impacts of the plastic bags and they did lots of learning in the class about why they were doing the dance and the different moves that they were doing. So I thought that was a really clever way of talking about sustainability in the, in the dance classroom and in the dance context. And the kids loved it because they got to, you know, do lots of wavy movements. Um, this is an example of an, an English task that um, someone emailed through to me and said, oh, you know, we're talking lots about sustainability. I want to try and get the kids talking about it. So she did a film study. Um, so she was looking at films like The Lorax and, and Wally. Um, and her task was her kids had to create a narrative, but the narrative had to be about, you know, a futuristic society where if we didn't change our ways, the environment was destroyed. So their narrative was all about, you know, what was it that happened? So they had to discuss a real life issue that could lead to disastrous effects if it's not taken on. And um, within their story, they had to talk about what happened to the earth because of that. You know, what was their new world like? And, you know, discussion why society shouldn't make the same mistakes again. And, you know, what, what's better? So I thought that was another exciting way to incorporate sustainable learning into a, a different context in the English classroom. One of our science teachers, because we were grumbling one day about all the chemicals that we use. So a lot of our EAT newsletters, we always give like handy hints on chemicals. So the science class decided, well, we use lots of like weed killer in our law. I wonder if we can come up with a better way to do it and eliminate that chemical from our school. So the science class, they went out and they experimented with a whole heap of different natural products or products that you could find in the everyday household. And they experimented on the weeds over time. And it was a little bit of a competition to see who could come up with the best weed killer that didn't contain the chemicals that we were previously using. Um, so they decided that one litre of vinegar, uh, dishwashing liquid and salt was actually just as effective as a weed killer as our highly chemical based weed killer that we were buying in. So we actually don't use this as a site anymore. We use our good old homemade weed control at our site for those sort of spot weeds that we want to get rid of. So the kids not only took part in the experimentation and the learning about it, they also can then see that it's actually being implemented in our school site and the benefits that that's bringing about being implemented into our school site. Challenges time. Um, so I did just want to start to say we, we have done some really, really awesome work. However, um, we do still have some roadblocks that we need to get past. Time is a, is a massive one. I said at the beginning I'm the, the HASS and sustainability coordinator. That means that I still get my one line off. I'm still only a B1 leader. So my one line off a week, I have to deal with the HASS faculty, which is quite large and complex at a site like ours, and do all of that. Um, so it is extremely time consuming. Uh, we do have the volunteer group that do sort of bits and pieces to help out, uh, which is amazing. And I absolutely appreciate all the wonderful work that they do. 
but it, it, it isn't easy balancing that time and a lot of that stuff is done as volunteer work. So we are having conversations this year about, well, is what we're doing sustainable in terms of our own mental health even for the, the amount of time that we're putting in? So we're focusing a lot on, on policy. So rather than us having to promote this all the time, that it's actually written into our school policy that this is the way that we're going to do it. And getting all staff on board, I'm sure that every site has that, the complexities of getting everyone on board. We have extremes at our site. I've been accused of making us too much into a recycling centre, we're a school. I've also been called a hypocrite because I'm leader of the environment team and I'm not a vegan. Uh, so <laughs> total extremes of, of where we're coming from. But we have come a long, long way with, with the strategies that we've put in place that aren't too imposing on staff that staff can, some of them can have a little bit of fun with as well and gain benefits from. Um, but just starting those conversations and getting staff interested in sustainability was, I guess, our number one asset. And we just need to find out where we're going to go from, from here.